Mi juiam, netuanine El Frank, none tongvet kukavet koi raramuri. My name is El Frank. I am from the Tongva tribe and the Hashmim tribe and Raramuri. If you don't know those names, it's all right. Um, well, it's not all right, but I understand because we have been deemed extinct for quite a while now. Everything about us, they say, is gone. Cham chapa chamae om chiqui squi cham. Cham chapa chamae om chiqui squi cham. Yam yapa yam yapa yani. Yam ay om. Yani yam ay Cham chapa cham amai om chikwi squi cham. Doesn't matter how many times I come to this museum or any museum around the world, it's always like the first time. And at the same time, it feels like you're seen family again that you haven't visited in a long time. I'm in an archives room, drawer after drawer after drawer of the lives of people. They're artifacts, artifacts to be studied, scientifically studied. And quite often I want to know the result of that science. I want to know what's residue on a rock, what's residue on a bowl. I want to know what my people ate, and sometimes science is the only way. But they treat it as non-living things. Like this is just a shard, just a shard of pottery. But there's a, a whole village of people behind this. This is something that, that tells me how my people lived, where they lived, where they traveled to. This is not an, something that's an artifact to be tucked away and used for scientific purposes of the once was. These pieces are for the future, not the once was, but for the future. They tell a story. They tell lots of stories. Since the beginning of time when Creator created the world, when the world was born, our people have been making and doing for about 200 and some odd years. We've been interrupted. It was a little thing like genocide, um, Holocaust, sort of slowed us down in our connection. So there's a great many indigenous peoples around the world, including us here, that work very hard at knowing who we are, are through who we were and what we did. The act of making stone pieces again, it completes a picture. It gives us information that you can't get from a book or from someone else because you have to feel the stone under your hands. I've spent years coming into this and other archives to learn things. Sometimes when I'm sleeping, I dream about the archives and that I live here. They're never far from my mind. They're never far from my heart. They're pieces of our people that are trapped in this place so that I can come and learn things. to the museum not just to look at these baskets but to look at the culture and try and see it in its wholeness. <clears throat> this is a Tongva basket. It's pretty rare in this world. It's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Every single stitch. It, this is just a beautiful basket stitch by stitch. 
when you come in here and you look at all of these baskets that people have made, you can't help but think about all the seasons of life. It's a wonder that these baskets are here. Everything that is born is made to die. So it's a wonder that these baskets are still here. A lot of people ask me why I make canoes. They think, oh, you make canoes so you can go out on the water. Well, they don't realize I'm petrified of going on the water. The canoe, to me, sincerely, and to many other indigenous peoples around the world, is um, the vessel that contains the culture. It holds the people. It holds language and basketry, all the knowledge. This is something that, that holds all of that which means it holds the people together. This canoe is the second of two Tongva canoes in about 230 or 40 years. It was made by a small community of people, but it's traveled and been with a worldwide community of people. Indigenous people around the world recognize that um, there's a great flood coming. Everyone get your water gear ready. And this canoe and their canoes, uh, we support each other in, in the knowledge of how to make something that we used to make with great regularity. Oh, fire making. We're learning the lessons now. We're taking the information that's been embedded in each and every one of these pieces and each and every one of these drawers and we're bringing our cultures back with an understanding of who we were so we can know who we are. Oh, this is for gambling. What beautiful gambling sets. And everything and everybody in here is talking and everybody's talking a different language. But it's hard to be heard when you're just a specimen. They want to go home. They want to be reburied. They want to be useful in a different way, or they want their use, usefulness to end. This bowl is so special. How, how long ago was this bowl made? 500 years ago? 1,000 years ago? It's time for me to learn to make these bowls so that they can rest. It's time for us to learn everything we can so everything can rest. We have to understand the same thing that our ancestors understood. But they passed on something to us, and it was something of themselves, not just something from their ancestors, and that's our obligation. So we have a job to do. We're not special in that job, it's just the job Creator gave us. We just have a job to do. Let's care for the planet, for where we come from. In this canoe, our canoes, our baskets, our languages, our dances, they all fit right here. Many times we're in, we've been made extinct. They hit us pretty hard, said, stop this, stop that, don't do what you're doing. And that's to many indigenous peoples around the world. But now those same people that did all that come to us and say, oh no, we need your help. How are we gonna stop the forest from burning or the oceans from being too hot or, or the land from not you know, producing food. And, um, you know, they have no answers. Uh, and fortunately, uh, we do. Ha aquayo, tota shunga loma, ha wurui, ha shunga tia tia, ha shunga momatia. 
Ashungatia Ha Aquayo Ha Aquayo Ha